Welcome back. It's time for Five Under Five. This time, it's Everyday Farmhouse, hosted by Missy from The Crafty Cove, Emily from Farm Charm Chic, and Shannon from Shannon's Crafty DIYs. Links to our hosts, co-hosts, and playlists will be in the description box. Start this each sign. I'm using a sign from last Christmas. So I had already removed the metal piece from the front last year. And I'm just pulling off the twine hanger so that I could apply white apple barrel paint to the back side. Once my white paint was dry, I used a matte light mocha with a chip brush just to give just a little bit of distressing. And just following the shape of the board, I added lines with my ruler and a pencil. And then I placed my toy skillet so that I could get a good reference for where I need to set my letters up. Then I figure out the exact placement for my skillet and I just apply some hot glue and press it firmly. I add glue stick to ensure that my letters will stay on my board. Don't forget to check the toy aisle when you go to Dollar Tree. They have so many cute pieces like this skillet. Then I glued down my pan sausage and my egg into the skillet and doesn't this look like a yummy country breakfast, especially that pan sausage just like Jimmy Dean. And I added just a bit more hot glue to ensure that my egg and my sausage stay in place in the skillet. I added my twine hanger back through the board and then it was ready to hang. Although I prefer my eggs scrambled, this is a cute sign with the eggs and sausage. I would need some nice cheesy grits on the side and a nice cup of coffee. Here's a few examples of some creations from Missy at the Crafty Cove. Gorgeous fall decor, beautiful cottage core, and Emily, she's created some faux jadeite and it's mixed in with the real thing and you couldn't even tell. Beautiful Christmas in July, getting us all in the spirit. And Shannon, our co-host, has made some gorgeous trash to treasure items and beautiful farmhouse decor. Please go to their channels and subscribe. I'm starting out this rocking chair with two wooden wire brushes from the Dollar Tree, a bamboo cutting board, and a box of tumbling tower blocks. And I start by removing the wire bristles with a plier tool. With all bristles removed from both pieces, I sanded down the handles. And then I moved on to the legs. I ended up doing a set of four with three blocks glued on each. Then using the cutting board as my guide, I laid it on top of the handles so I would know exactly where I would need to place the legs according to how wide the cutting board is. I then attach my legs with Gorilla Wood Glue. And while the legs were drying, I moved on to assembling the seat portion where the arm rest and the back of the chair would be. And I just was stacking up the blocks to see about how tall I would need to make them. And I ended up making it two blocks tall in the front for the arm rest and four tall for the back.
and then using some craft sticks that I found at Dollar Tree last year I'm just gonna snip the end of it because with the rounded end facing outward it really looks like the arm of a rocking chair And for the top back of the rocking chair, I'm using a giant craft stick that I found at Walmart. And again, with the rounded ends of it, it just is perfect for a rocking chair. I don't need to sand anything down. And then once I gauged where exactly I wanted to set up the giant craft stick, I just added a bit of hot glue and then attached it. And to fill out the back portion of my rocking chair, I'm using bamboo skewers that I already had on hand at home. I set my skewer against the back of the chair to see where I needed to snip. And then I repeated that for the next four or five more skewers and adding the Gorilla Glue to the bottom of the skewer and then hot glue to the top. I pressed it against the back of the giant craft stick so that I could fill out the back of the rocking chair. Then I used a Dollar Tree paintbrush and a matte white apple barrel paint to just haphazardly go around painting here and there. So it looks like Granny has used this chair lovingly and rocked her children and now her grandchildren and the paint just got worn away. Then I used a bit of antique white very sparingly. I don't have much left in the bottle but I applied it. Um, just um, a little less than I did with the white paint, just very, very little here and there, just to add a variation in the colors. And the final color I used was a matte khaki from Apple Barrel. I love the combination of these three for a really um, distressed look, but not a dark distressing. Still, you know, you can see some of the tone of the bamboo and of the handles from the wire brushes. And then I added um, another craft stick as like a brace for the legs just to give the rocking chair a nice finishing look. Then I use the Gorilla Wood Glue again to glue the seat to the leg portion. And here's Granny's rocking chair all finished and it actually does rock you guys this reminds me of my own Granny's rocking chair that used to sit on her porch and we used to fight to take turns to sit in it I love the way this rocking chair turned out let me know what you think of this in the comments I found this farmhouse glass faded cake stand online and thought it was just beautiful. And it gave me an idea of adding glass beads to one of the Dollar Tree vases. So I found one of the Pop Belly vases and I didn't find any glass beads. I did find the glass marbles. So I'm going to apply them to the top of this Pop Belly jar with a Gorilla clear grip glue and I'm gonna apply two to three beads at a time so that I can go all the way around and the beads don't just all fall off. I have to set my glue onto the glass first and let it get tacky and then move on from there. And I'm putting Gorilla Glue on the side of the bead as well so when I set the one next to it, they're glued to each other and the vase. And this is the progress I made going all the way around. The space that's left, I can't put the remaining few beads 
all in a row so i'm going to put them a little bit lower like both sides dipped down And here's my completed beaded poppily vase. I wish Dollar Tree had some smaller marbles, but for what they had, I'm happy with the way it looks. Let me know what you guys think of this beaded vase. To start my wheelbarrow, I'm using a loaf pan from Dollar Tree, two pickle jar lids, and tumbling tower blocks. I took my lids outside and spray painted them with a matte black paint. Once the lids were completely dry, I brought them back in and applied Gorilla Clear Grip Glue. I let it sit for a few minutes to get tacky and then press the lids together to form a really good bond. These will be the wheel for the wheelbarrow. Tumbling tower and for the tumbling to tower blocks, before I glue them to the wheel, I'm gonna I'm stain them with uh, American, American Walnut American by Rust-Oleum. With the stain all dry, I used the wood glue to glue the blocks together in sections of two, except for the two pieces that I would use for the wheel. I applied one block on either side of the wheel with the Gorilla Clear Grip. Once the glue was tacky enough, I went ahead and applied the blocks to the wheel. Then it was time to apply my wheel to the bottom of the pan. So I was just looking to see where I would set it up. And then I just applied the clear grip glue directly to the wood pieces. I let them sit for a bit to get tacky. And I did the same thing with the tower blocks. And then I started to apply them to the loaf pan. I did add a little hot glue to help with a quick hold as well. If you're enjoying this content so far, I hope you consider subscribing to my channel. I'd love to have you on board. Then I finished assembling my wheelbarrow by adding the rest of my wood pieces. And here's my loaf pan wheelbarrow. I like it. It's a nice size. I can use it outdoors. That's why I use the stain. So it'd be good for indoor, outdoor. And I can put my fall veggies or flowers or, you know, whatever I want in there as the seasons change. And I think it's cute. I started this project out by using my good buddy Google to search images of hen parts a head the wings and the tail feathers then i use parchment paper to trace them out so that i can make stencils to use with my wood slats after cutting my stencil i used um, just a regular pencil and traced out the image of this wing onto the slat and then I used my other good buddy, my Dremel, to go ahead and start to cut it out. I did the same for the other three pieces. And for the head, I had to make a little slit in the bottom so that I could use that to attach it to the metal planter. And once all the pieces were cut, I moved on to sanding everything down so the edges were nice and smooth. And going off a photo of a hen, I'm just marking off what areas to make red and which ones were white. 
Then it was time to paint and I'm using just a flat matte white apple barrel paint. And for the tail, I added in a bit of black and I just worked it in so that it actually looked like it was layers of feathers. And I'm using a bright red apple barrel matte paint for the head of the hen. I used yellow puff paint I found at Dollar Tree for the beak. And using that same matte white paint, I just used a chippy brush just to brush a bit of it on. And when that was dry, I did a dry fit of my wood pieces and then I applied the same Gorilla Clear Grip glue to those, let it get tacky. they were ready I applied a bit of hot glue to the center for that quick hold and then pressed them onto my galvanized planter And for the head, I just applied the Gorilla Glue into the little slit that I had made and a bit onto the planter itself and then applied it on top and then put a bit of hot glue on one side to like really stabilize it and then I put a little bit underneath to help it stay up. And then just a dab of the black puffy paint for the eyeball and that's all she wrote Henrietta Hen here is complete and she looks absolutely adorable I am so happy with the way she turned out please let me know guys what do you think of Miss Henrietta here she just looks so great even you know with eggs with gourds pumpkins you know whatever you want to put inside of it and even though I use wood, you could recreate this with the foam board. And here's a look back at my other farmhouse projects. I love the way everything looks, but my favorite has to be Granny's rocking chair just because it's a replica of my own Granny's actual rocking chair. And this was so much fun. I feel like I always say that, but I just love creating.